All right, so we did some texture overlays in the last video just to add atmosphere. And though this isn't quite the right setting, you can see how that kind of uh, steamy texture helps to integrate my, my creature. It makes it look like maybe it's a hot springs in this cavern. So what can I do? This was just a grayscale texture overlay from from Google Images, not very large resolution. It wasn't even a thousand by a thousand pixels. But as I grew it to be bigger, it softened and that's fine. But I don't like the color of it. Like I could take its opacity down, but I don't like how dead it looks, that gray. So what you can do with grayscale is I can rasterize it and then I can use the direct adjustment of hue saturation. So I go to image adjustment, hue saturation and if I don't click anything else and I just play with the hue it won't change at all because grayscale has no hue if I play with the saturation it won't change it oh, it will if I really push it but it won't change much at all because grayscale is already desaturated but if I click on colorize then I can play with its hue and its saturation so you can force something that doesn't have color, or you could even force something that does have color into a monochrome color scheme using hue saturation. So if I want this to be a little bit kind of like pale and bluish, I can find that color, right? And then I can play with its intensity. Because I think it helps set the scene. And then I can actually play with its lightness or its darkness. And I'm going to actually push up its lightness quite a bit. And I'm going to say OK, because now what I can do is I can play with its opacity in a few different ways. So now that I've changed its color using hue, saturation, and colorize, I can take that opacity down and that kind of glazes over everything. Helps bring things together, but also helps helps incorporate my creature into the setting. And then I can use my eraser with extremely soft edges, pressure sensitive with my tablet, really large size at low opacities. And I could start revealing my creature so that they show up a little bit more in the middle ground and less like they're in the background. And then I can kind of decide where do I want my creature to be underwater? Do I want it to be right at the knee, right there? Or do I want it to be at more like the calf? And I can reveal them, right? I think I went a little too, too far with the tail. There we go. So for my creature, this is how I can set the scene. Then I can make my brush even bigger for my eraser. And I can just kind of push that opacity down even more. And I can be like a force of nature just blowing this atmosphere around. And kind of clear it from certain areas. Because I want to see these little stalagmites more. Keep it more towards the water. And maybe clear it a little bit from the immediate foreground as well where the atmosphere hasn't built up quite as much and that's helping with the lighting of my character without even uh, doing anything else so I can do it with this texture overlay, which is more purple. And I can decide where I want it more revealed. And you can layer up as many texture overlays as you want. What do they look like on their own? 
This is where I wish PhotoP would be a little bit more responsive, but turning these things off. But that's what that texture overlay looks like. You can kind of see where I cut out my creature. Then I added this texture overlay. And then I have my foreground elements. Then I have my, my creature, my actor, and then I have the background. Okay, what's next? Well, we're going to save our work. So now we've, we've placed our creature, we've matched their anatomy, but now we need to match their lighting. And this texture overlay inclusion helps everything kind of work together, but my creature still seems like it's lit differently than this environment is lit. So how do we fix that? Well, for one thing, if there's a light coming from this opening, there seems to be light coming from up here and here, then it's going to be hitting my creature and my creature is going to cast a shadow. Do you guys agree? There's going to be some sort of shadow or reflection in the water that comes from the direction of the light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn that shadow in. But instead of burning it right into my, my background, that's like burning your, your set curtain instead of just changing the lighting on it. I'm going to make a new layer on top of it. And this is a new skill. This is going to be called a non-destructive editing layer. I make a new blank layer on top of my setting, but behind my creature. And then I say, edit fill with middle gray. And 100% normal. So what do we have? If I turn off the texture fills in the foreground, that's what I have. I have my creature on a middle gray plate. Now I'm going to call this a non-destructive overlay layer. Just like a texture overlay. But instead of just playing with the opacity, I'm going to actually play with its blending mode and I'm going to set it to overlay. And what that does at 50% gray is absolutely nothing to all the pixels behind it. Because it's non-destructive. But anything that goes brighter than 50% gray and anything that goes darker is going to affect the pixels underneath. So how can I make a shadow? I can simply use my burn tool on this non-destructive layer. And I'm going to use my burn tool in the midtones, pressure sensitive and exposure of less than 20, with a brush that's super soft, super large. And I'm just going to start burning it underneath my creature. What does this look like? Looks like that on my non-destructive layer. So if I turn it off, come on. You can see the impact it has on the pixels underneath. And if I overdo it, which I often do with the burn tool, even at less than 20, I can always just take its opacity down and find the right level. So that gives me a good shadow cast from my creature. And even with all the texture overlays, that makes a difference. You know, it knocks down those highlights. I might decide I also want to burn some of the texture overlay at that place. So it looks a little bit more like it's underwater. Right? Now that's burning directly. And I might decide I want to burn the setting directly as well, not just on the non-destructive overlay layer. But these are all the tools you have to make what's called a cast shadow. Now, if I make a new layer and I fill that with gray, I'm going to teach you a little bit of just really basic light logic. This is what you take drawing for and painting for and you look at books for. But I'm just going to show you with black and white on this layer, how lighting works and lighting direction. So if light's coming from this side onto a sphere, you're going to have a highlight directly where that light is hitting, right? That makes sense. Let me soften this brush a little bit. So I have a highlight there. What is corresponding to the highlight? It's what's called the cast shadow. And that comes from where, let's make it pressure sensitive. There we go. 
where the shadow of where the object is touching the surface and where the shadow is radi radiating out from. So the way cast shadows work is they're sharpest right at the point of contact. And you can see this with the fluorescent lights in your hand on your desk. If you put your hand right on your desk, you'll see the cast shadow underneath it. It's sharp and dark. As you lift your hand from the desk, you'll see how it softens out and lightens. So as that shadow pulls away from the object and the light source, it softens out. It becomes lighter and lighter at the edges. It kind of gradates towards that nice crisp edge, right? Now, the form shadows on the thing itself, they actually will have what's called a core shadow. And then why doesn't that go all the way to the edge? Well, it's because light is also hitting onto the surfaces around your object. Sorry, I just want to make this dark. So the light, come on, Keep up with me. So the light is not only hitting the object, it's also hitting, it's way too small. <laughs> it's still too small. There we go. It's also hitting the surface and then it's reflecting back. So it's bouncing off the surface and reflecting back onto this edge and that's called reflected light. So these are form shadows and these are cast shadows. What we just did with our non-destructive overlay layer was create a cast shadow underneath our creature because the light's hitting here. So there's going to be a cast shadow underneath and it looks like this. Right? And if that's too strong, you can always adjust it. One easy way to adjust it is to make a new layer on top of it that you fill with middle gray and then just take the opacity down on that, right? And then we set these both to overlay. Oh, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Never mind. This is how it will work. I'm going to duplicate this shadow by using my magic wand, selecting around it. Come on, come on. I'm going to use a pretty big feather. Okay, then, or just a, a one pixel feather. Then I'm going to do select inverse. And I'm going to move to this layer and then select just that gray shape, right, for the shadow. Boom. So now, when I turn on this background, I can play with this to either lighten or to darken or to manipulate this shadow in other ways as a non-destructive overlay. And then to blend it in, I can just use my eraser at 100% opacity and bite away from the edges. So when you put these together, you can control how deep that shadow is underneath. Get kind of the mid-tones and everything in between. All right, next, you can also use this non-destructive overlay layer to burn in areas that are not related to your creature, just to improve your landscape. So for instance, I can use the burn tool and I can darken this band over here, make it seem like it's further back, especially behind where my creature is, right? So that my creature appears a little bit sharper. And if I need to, I can burn highlights, not just midtones. What you don't want to do is burn shadows because then they just go to black very quickly. 